Joining us now, Congressman Raul Ruiz. Congressman, um, after eight months, the House and the Senate have now passed a $900 billion relief bill, which honestly, sir, isn't going to provide much relief for the average worker. How do you feel about the bill that was passed? Well, I, I voted for the bill because my constituents are on the verge of being evicted. Uh, many of our small business owners on the verge of losing their business. The unemployed are on the verge of losing their unemployment insurance enhancement. Uh, families are struggling. Uh, we're desperate in getting our kids back to a safe school. Uh, and we need the support to help our healthcare workers and to help boost our economy during this pandemic that's been hard in our district. However, I am disappointed that it took eight months uh, for Mitch McConnell to bring up a bill, any bill. Uh, nonetheless, the HEROES Act that we passed twice out of the House uh, that had more robust aid, uh, but any bill, even a Republican Senate bill, uh, he failed to bring up and pass uh, for eight months and waited till the American people were desperate and in this situation. Clearly, it is underwhelming in terms of the support for another stimulus check, for uh, the enhanced unemployment aid, and for the aid for small business. But nonetheless, there is significant uh, over $350 uh, billion for small businesses, over $80 billion to help our schools uh, uh, open safely uh, and to recover from this pandemic. We have over $25 billion to enhance broadband for our students who are struggling with our schools. Uh, we have billions in aid for our hospitals, for our public health departments, uh, and, uh, and we have $600 per adult and child uh, as another round of stimulus check and $300 uh, dollars per week extra for the uninsurance, uh, uninsurance enhancement. Uh, but this is till March. Uh, and I look forward to working with a new administration to provide the robust, comprehensive funding that we will need to prevent a depression, uh, to rebuild our economy and build it back better, and to put a quick, rapid, and safe end to this pandemic. I think we can all agree that something is better than nothing at this point, but let's look at some of the pork that was stuffed in this thing. Two billion dollars for Space Force, which near as I can tell so far they've accomplished uniforms and a logo that they stole from Star Trek. Thirty five million dollars for sexual abstinence programs, a tax break for owners of racehorses and of course the famous three martini lunch tax break. Are you concerned about some of this stuff that was stuck into what is nearly a trillion dollars of taxpayer money going to people that don't need the help? So, uh, Gino, the, the difficulty with this bill is that it was combined with a end-of-year omnibus budget bill to fund the government, uh, which was another uh, delayed crisis due to Mitch McConnell's absence in, in, in governance. Uh, the House passed uh, all of their appropriations, funding bills in record time. Uh, this last Congress, and we were waiting for Mitch McConnell to do so in the Senate, but that did not happen. So given it, the fact that we averted a government shutdown during this holiday season, the budget bill was attached uh, combined with the coronavirus aid package. And so that's why you're seeing a lot of different types of funding uh, that uh, was put into other uh, departments in the government. Now, many of these were pet projects from President Trump uh, that he specifically adamantly uh, advocated for, uh, like the three martini tax break for corporations to use the corporate account uh, to deduct their lunches for their staff. Uh, first of all, how in the hell is that going to help our mom and pop small restaurants here in the Coachella Valley? Uh, unless some rich corporate uh, CEO uh, expenses their lunch at those specific locations. Now, we needed, we needed the Restaurant Act, which would have helped put money in the pockets of our waitresses, uh, of our small business restaurant owners, so that they can withstand, make the appropriate strategic investments necessary to build back better. 
but it's not all lost and gone. There is hope uh, with a new administration uh, for us to come back and come back better uh, with more robust funding. I must say too, uh, that this is a situation where Democrats fought very hard for state and uh, local municipality funding so that we can fund firefighters, teachers, and the police. It was the Republican uh, caucus who denied funding for states and counties and cities, and they denied and blocked funding for police. So this is a big disappointment for us because we know that our county and our cities are in desperate need to pay for their first responders, for teachers, and for the revenue that they've lost because of this horrible pandemic. Right. One of the problems with the first round was there seemed to be no oversight because the president had fired the IG who was supposed to oversee where the money was going. And we know now that a lot of the money went to places that just flat out shouldn't have gotten it. Um, the 4.4 million that Joel Osteen's mega church got being the prime example of somebody who doesn't pay taxes in the first place. And he gets in $4 million, let yet our local restaurants and mom and pop shops can't get just a small, small percentage of that amount. Is there anything in this bill? Because there is a nice cutout for small business, but is there something in there where somebody will oversee it to make sure that it's going to the actual small business owners and not a large corporation that has everything chopped up into small businesses, if that makes sense? So the House Committee on Oversight and Investigation will do the investigation uh, secondly, there are reports that are required from the CARES Act to precisely uh, report on this. And then finally, uh, President Trump removed the head investigator uh, from the attorney, uh, the, the government uh, uh, accountability and oversight uh, department. However, we have a new president with a new administration with new oversight investigators who will comply with the, the intent of the law, which is to make sure that the money goes where it is needed the most. Uh, in addition to that, this new bill has a very large sum of monies that are designated for small businesses, uh, those that are truly uh, suffering, mom and pop shops with less than, uh, than 10 employees, uh, for minorities, for women, for veterans, uh, in addition to nonprofits, our arts communities, our theaters, uh, and other live venue locations that have suffered in our tourism industry here in the Coachella Valley will now have access not only to the monies, uh, new monies from the Small Business Administration, but also through the PPP loan with some strength and safeguards. Right. Now, you mentioned we're simply going to have to revisit this in March because though the vaccines are rolling out, there's no real money in here to help cities and states roll out the vaccine. So we can assume it'll be better in March, but we won't be there yet. And the Republicans are already oh. starting to scream about deficit, which has gone from $500 billion to $3.5 trillion during the Trump administration. But now Republicans are screaming about debt and deficit. Are we going to be able to get anywhere in March to get another trillion dollar package out the door? Well, 24, uh, over $2.4 billion, Gino, went specifically for vaccine distribution in underserved, hard to reach community like we have in Desert Hot Springs or Eastern Coachella Valley or other locations that are medically underserved uh, in the Coachella Valley uh, and communities like those throughout the nation, uh, especially those that have hardest hit communities like the farm worker communities and others. So this is an equity provision and safeguard within the fundings that is localized. But you're absolutely right, Gino. Uh, when when uh, there is support for nutrition programs, for uh, students, for teachers, for local police in order to keep them safe and funding uh, provisions uh, through this pandemic, Republicans cry foul and, uh, and use the debt as an excuse why they don't want to fund it. However, when they're in charge and they fund their priorities, which are multi-million dollar tax breaks for millionaires and billionaires and permanent loss of revenue by giving the largest, most affluent, powerful corporations their, uh, their tax breaks, then they have no problem with how their decisions will affect our debt. 
Well, yeah, I agree with you. I think we're going to see at least four years of suddenly um, needing to have write-offs for everything the Democrats want to spend. They're going to want write-offs from the Republican side, and we haven't heard a peep out of them for four years about that. Um, one last question for you, and I'm not sure anybody can answer it, but... Right now, the vaccines are going to hospitals because they're mostly inoculating doctors and nurses and hospital frontline workers. But at some point, and hopefully fairly soon, we're going to start getting out to the general public. We know CVS and Walgreens are involved, but do you have any idea if the system is in place to make appointments, to start lining up? Does anybody know how it's going to work when the, when the vast majority of Americans can finally get a vaccine? That is precisely the uh, advocacy and the questions that I'm asking the American Medical Association, the American Hospital Associations, the retail stores, as well as the state public health agencies uh, in order to create that plan. What I can tell you is that locally on the ground, focusing on our most vulnerable populations, uh, those that are the, the front workers, the high-risk essential workers, uh, that there is a very uh, important effort uh, spearheaded by the uh, Desert uh, Healthcare uh, District uh, to work with local nonprofits and community agents to really go door to door, take the vaccines to the community uh, like I initiated at the very beginning of this pandemic with testing, because that's the way we're going to reach uh, the and build the confidence for the most vulnerable and highest risk communities to, to become vaccinated. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to working with them in order to make that <coughs> vaccination campaign successful. All right. And then Governor Newsom just a short time ago announced Alex Padilla um, as the one who he is nominated to take over Kamala Harris's Senate seat. Um, the first Latino senator from the state of California and a seat that you might be eyeballing in two years from now. Any thoughts on that? You know, I, I, I uh, give my kudos and appreciation to Governor Newsom for making the uh, right choice. Uh, and for respecting everybody's perspectives, all the different groups, it was a difficult one to make, but he made the right one in recognizing the large population of Latinos in California, the contributions that Latinos and Latinas have made to our state and our nation. And, uh, and I look forward as CHC chair in welcoming a Senator Alex Padilla to our membership in Congress. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Congressman, Merry Christmas. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. I know this is a huge topic that we could talk about for another hour, but we appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you.